Hey, welcome to WorstTutorials.com. Today you're hanging out with Bradford. And Brian. All right, today we have the Line 6 Power Cab Plus. This thing is a beast. We're gonna review it, we're gonna demo some sounds from it, but I think really to give you uh, maybe how you would respond upon very first hearing it, uh, we got it in th into the studio here, what, a, a week or two ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I told Brad, like, you're going to love this thing, and I made sure to roll a camera when Brad first played through it. So you're going to see Bradford's very first unadulterated uh, response to hearing the power cam. Literally, first thing I did, Brian had the camera rolling before I even played. Halfway at noon is going to be super loud, and then angle it back so you get the... Uh, you already felt a little thump, didn't you? I did. You? I already felt like... The like, that's the amp in the room thing. Okay. Here Ready? like completely different than anything I've experienced with the Kemper so far. This is awesome. So as you can tell, Brad liked it. Amazing. Still likes it. I still like it. <laughs> this thing is pretty awesome. You have to really experience it in person. criticisms of playing uh, a Helix or a Kemper, we're going to play both of them today, is that uh, you don't get the experience of an amp in the room. So a lot of times people will play through it and they'll say, well, it doesn't sound like an amp. Or it doesn't feel like one. Yeah, or it doesn't feel like one, right. And so the reason is, is all of these modeling pieces of gear, profiling, modeling, whatever, what they're doing is they're modeling an amp and modeling a, a, a speaker cabinet and modeling a microphone capturing that speaker cabinet. So it would be like if you're in a control room in a recording studio and the amp is in an amp room and you can't hear the amp, you can just hear the mic sound of the amp. That's what these things do. It doesn't sound like an amp in a room. It's like if you're used to playing in front of a tube amp, it doesn't sound like that. And it doesn't feel like that. And no. that's that's one of the big things. Feel and sound, it's just people, yeah. can't, people can't shake it, which is fine. Yeah, and so this thing is meant to replicate an actual speaker in a cabinet. Not a mic speaker being amplified through other reference monitors, but an actual cabinet, guitar cabinet speaker. And it nailed it. Oh, like yeah. It's, it's significantly different. You can see different. in my reaction in the video. Yeah. This is awesome. It was like hearing a match list for the first time again. And so I always used to think, too, like, if you if you take a Helix and run it through reference monitors, which is how I always, you know, studio monitors, if you just turn them up really loud, you'll get that sense of, of, of being in front of an amp. Or if, you, or if you run it in front of a FRFR speaker, like a flat range frequency response speaker, and turn it up really loud, you get that, but it's you not. You That's don't. why I was shaking my head earlier. I didn't realize he was yeah. going to add something. No, I knew what you were doing, though. <laughs> hey, but this also is an FRFR. It does. We'll get to the features of it. But it's. I, I wanted to spend some time up front just saying, like, you're not going to experience in this video or any video uh, what this thing does. You have to experience it in person. <laughs>
Okay, so to demonstrate what you can do with this thing, we we came up with as complicated a setup as we could think of <laughs> in an hour or so. It was oh, we so, spent a lot of time trying to figure this out. Yeah, so we're gonna cut to some some examples, and and you'll see on the screen what you're listening to. But this is what we did: we ran the Helix and the Kemper into it through a complicated Helix setup that we'll maybe talk about in a different video. So you're going to hear Helix and Kemper running into this thing. In both situations, you're going to hear the Helix and the Kemper with their cabinet modeling turned off and the cabinet modeling, the speaker modeling turned on in here and mic'd and the uh, cabinet modeling with the mic emulation direct out of the power cab. And you're gonna hear the direct out uh, with cabinet modeling turned on of the Helix and the Kemper respectively. But we're trying to give you a baseline and then kind of hear the differences of what yeah. you could, as best as we could replicate in this video so you could get an idea of what it does. Yeah. PowerCab Plus allows you to load third-party IRs, which we feel like take this thing to the next level. Like, a whole nother level. Yeah, so what you heard in those first samples was just stock sounds that you get with either of the PowerCab uh, models. But we also recorded some sound samples using an IR from Live Ready Sound. We favor them. Yeah, well they reached out to us as well, because we posted something on social media that we were getting a, a power cab, and they said, hey, we're developing IR specifically for the power cab. Yes. So they're meant to sound more like a raw speaker rather than a mic speaker, if that makes sense. Uh, they sent them to us, they're available now, we'll have a link below where you can get those. Uh, but I, we picked our favorite. I think it's the 160. It, they used a Creamback speaker, which is the, the uh, stock speaker that we used. It's my favorite sounding one in there. Um, and so here are the samples of both Brad and I playing uh, different, different setups with the Live Ready Sound IR. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's talk features of this thing. You can actually do a lot with it. So it does, as we've been talking about, speaker cabinet modeling. And it also has what, what they call a flat mode. And so if you're used to like a typical FRFR speaker, if you don't know what that means, is it full range or is it flat range? Brad's gonna look it up. Basically what it is, if you think about like a PA or a studio monitor, PA speaker or studio monitor, it just takes what you put into it and amplifies it without coloring the sound in any way. Uh, they all kind of do color the sound a little bit because anytime you run out of a speaker, what is it, Brad? Full range, flat response. Full range, flat response. So we were both kind of. We right promise we know wrong. what we're talking about. <laughs> Google. We know what sounds good. If it is good, it is good. Yeah, if it sounds good, it is good. That's yeah. also true. So it has a flat mode in it, so you can use it as an FRFR speaker. Now that you know what it means, and uh, now that we know what it means, <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, you would turn the cabinet modeling in whatever modeler you're using on. Yeah, you'd want to uh, keep it on, probably the way you normally use it anyways. Yeah. The thing shines when you use the, the speaker modeling. And it comes with, I think is it six different speaker types? You can go to Line 6's website and read about the different uh, speakers that they actually modeled. The cream back speaker is our favorite of the stock sounds. And so if you're going to use the speaker modeling in this thing, you'd want to turn the cabinet modeling off in your modeler. Because this is now your cabinet. Or profiler. Or profiler. Thank you, Bradford. Bradford is is uh, is the the Kemper advocate over here. Yeah, I'm just making sure that <laughs> no Kemper gets left behind. That's right. <laughs> Kemper is awesome, by the way. Yes. Uh, so now when when you're using the um, the uh, the the cabinet modeling in this thing, whether you're using the stock cabinet models or the uh, the stock speaker models or an IR, you get a direct out which would be an important use case, I think, for a lot of people. And so if you're using an IR, the direct out is just the output of the IR. Mm -hmm. That's all I know about that. <laughs> it sounds good in the ones we've used. If you're using the stock speakers, the output, the direct out, uh, you get options for different uh, microphone models on it. So you can change the sound of the direct out. So if you think about it, the, the speaker modeling is just the guitar speaker itself. The output, the direct out, is the guitar speaker through a microphone. Which you can do that kind of thing in the Helix. It's too. the same thing. So yeah. if, you're, if you, you use a Helix, up, uh, you can do the same yeah. thing. Right. So that's basically how it works with Feature Set. You can do uh, high and low cuts. You can do um, you can do leveling on it. Like you can up the level or lower the level. Like if you have an IR that has a lot of level, you can lower that or you can raise it to match other things. Uh, you can, like I said, you can go to the website, Line 6 website, uh, or any other reviews on YouTube and get like sort of the rundown of the, the features. Um, we just wanted to give you more of a like, you should buy this because it's awesome. Kind of, <laughs> kind of an impression. Because of how great it is. Yeah. I mean, it, it just gives you that like mojo. Right. Back. This does the same thing for speakers and cabinets, essentially, that a Helix or a Kemper or whatever does for amp modeling. <laughs> you use it mm. so Brad was like so who would buy this thing why would you buy it because if you're in a lot like we play in churches right and most churches or the church we play at in a lot of churches everything is like in your monitoring stage volume is at a minimum so like if Brad uses Kemper I use helix we run it direct um, so like this does this have a place on that stage uh, and I hope you heard from the from the uh, from the samples we did the direct out of this thing is not not much different at all than the direct out of like the Helix or the Kemper. Yeah. I mean, Sounds it does something. It does something. Yeah. But like, do you want to lug this around? Because then you're back to <laughs> what you did yeah. initially with right. before you got one of these items. Yeah. So what is this thing for? And uh, we we came up with a with a handful of situations where it would be really useful. The first is just playing it yourself. Like yeah. if you, if you miss. Sitting, in, if you sold all your gear to buy a Helix or a Kemper or whatever, and you miss like sitting in front of a tube amp and just feeling that thing hit you in the chest. Yeah. Aside from wearing headphones, like 
Yes. But it's different. It's yeah. different. Yeah. Like if you wear that hits you right in the eardrums. Yes, it does. <laughs> so yeah, this will get it done. If you just want to jam with friends, you need a way to amplify whatever you're running into it. This thing will do it like, and sound like the real deal amp. Um, what else? If you're playing like a small gig. Yeah. Or like a yeah, whether it's church or a club gig or something like that. Yeah. Like, even if you're playing like a, a small venue where you could get away with a little bit of stage volume. Right. Yeah, I mean, you want to bring it back. You want it to sound good and look. I mean, this looks good, too. It looks like an amp, too. Yeah. It you don't want to just like put sure. like a speaker on stage. That may not look as amp-like. Yeah, <laughs> he's got like a PA speaker, Yeah. a separate wedge over there. Well, a lot of churches still run wedge monitors. Yeah. And if you struggle with like you need more guitar, you can use this as a personal monitor. Yeah, and you because you control the volume, you can not yeah. worry about it being too much. Yeah, so you could use this as your monitor so you can hear yourself and it's going to sound great. And then you can uh, send the direct out to your front of house yeah. and mic it all at the same time. You could have all those options. All those options. Uh, at, your, at your disposal, if you will. So, uh, yeah, what else? I think if you're dialing in patches, you can use it too. Yeah, yeah, just to listen back mode. and kind of get an idea of... Yeah. I mean, like if you don't... If you're going to do recording then you're going to want monitors and you're going to want a recording interface and you're going to want some sort of computer software or program and like that could be pricey and if you're rarely going to record if ever then why would you dump all that money into something that can only yeah. do one thing at home where you could use this for all the reasons we've stated and use it because you need something to listen to other than yeah. headphones because headphones just Sometimes it's just not, it's not fun. You want to no, you you rock want, out. You just want some loud, you want some air moving. This is great so you can hear your guitar. This just allows you to experience to, it. It's a different experience. More better. It's a better, a more, more better, better experience. More better amazingness experience. Yeah, definitely check it out.